Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about classification of matter. Earlier, in other videos, I already talked about chemistry definition, and I talk about the definition we may use in our classes for chemistry as a study of matters. Right now, I'm going to talk about different types of matters we may study in the chemistry. So this is the most commonly used chart in the chemistry classes. Matter can be classified by two different sides, pure substances and mixture. And after that, we may have two types for each one. For pure substances, we have element, compounds, and for mixture, we have homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. So we are going to work on this terminology and see what is the meaning of each one. First, let me talk about the pure substances and mixture. What is the difference between these two? When we say pure substance, we are talking about only one type of atom and molecules, but when we talk about mixture, we talk about different types of pure substances, different pure substances. We are going to see what does that mean. This is the definition we may find in our classes in the textbook. When we say pure substance and mixture, to find it, what is the difference between these two, let me give it you one example. Before working on the definition, I'm going to give you this example to make sure you understand the difference between these two without knowing the definition. Assume that I'm going to talk about salt, table salt, and you are going to talk about sugar, table sugar. So, I'm going to talk about salt, you are going to talk about sugar. When I'm going to talk about salt, I never talk about sugar. I only focus on my matter, my pure substance, my only substance. So, my only substance, we have pure substance, salt. There is nothing except salt. Nothing else. So only salt. No sugar, no water, no tea, no sand, no fruit, only salt. When you are going to talk about sugar, you are going to only talk about this substance, this matter, this chemical. So only this one. So only one. Pure substance. So pure substance, it means one substance. So you focus on that one. But if we are going to combine, we are going to mix salt and sugar. Right now, we have a combination of two pure substances. I may talk about both salt and sugar here. You may talk about both substances here. So we have a combination of pure substances. At that time, we call that we have a mixture. So mixture is a combination of pure substances. It doesn't matter two, three, or more. So you may add salt, sugar, water, three. You may add salt, sugar, water to sand, four. So we may have any combination. As long as we don't have only one, we may have more than one. We call that mixture. So if only one substance, one chemical, we call that pure substance. And when we have more than one pure substance, we call that mixture. So combination of pure substances. When you understand this definition for pure substances and mixture, we are going to work on types of each one. So I already talked about this one, pure substances and mixture. So pure substance, it means only one substance. Mixture means more than one substance. So for pure substances, we have this classification, elements and compounds. As you see here, it says element composed of one type of atom. In other video, I already explained what is the difference between atoms and molecules. And I said elements 
are composed of atoms and compounds are composed of molecules what does that mean when we say molecules it means molecules composed of atoms as well so i already talked about this right now i'm gonna give you some examples for each one what is the meaning of elements what is the meaning of compounds and why do we say atoms and molecules look at this slide please elements composed of only one type of material we call them atoms look when we say for example aluminum when we say lead copper so we are going to talk about only one type of element so in chemistry we have one table we call that the periodic table the periodic table at that periodic table we have about 118 elements or in other words we have about 118 atoms because elements composed of atoms so if we are going to talk about only one of these atoms it means we talk about elements so if I say for example in I this is the formula of nickel so whenever I say iron Fe I'm talking about only one element so these are examples of atoms you may find in the periodic table elements when we say compounds we are going to combine atoms combine atoms so when you combine atoms I'm sure you may say we make molecules we make molecules so look in this example for water I combined oxygen I combined hydrogen so combination of hydrogen and oxygen we call that water always we have a definite ratio between the atoms a definite ratio between the atoms always two hydrogens and one oxygen two and one if we have like this we call this specific combination of atoms by this ratio water so if i have for example h o two hydrogen two oxygen i don't call that water it's not what because it has the same elements hydrogen oxygen but it doesn't have this definite ratio so we don't call it water for sugar always we should have like this one c12 h22 o11 but for sugars because we have different types of sugar i'm talking about this type a specific type of sugar table sugar table sugar always we may say c12 h22 o11 three types of elements carbon hydrogen oxygen and this ratio 12 22 11 and same for other examples molecules composed of atoms as you see here this molecule composed of atom hydrogen oxygen this molecule carbon hydrogen oxygen when we have like this we call that compound we call that compound so in this slide if you have only one element we call it composed of atoms if we have one compound it composed of molecules and molecules already made by atoms so there are examples we may talk about this one how about mixture so mixture if you remember that i told you is a combination of pure substances combination of pure substances we always have two types of mixture please look at the terminology we have homogeneous and heterogeneous homo means one means one and hetero means more than one more than one what does that mean it means 
if we have a combination of mixture, if only one component is visible, is visible, we call that homogeneous mixture. Only one component is visible. If more than one component visible, we call that heterogeneous mixture. We are going to work on this one. We are going to work on this one. Please look here. This is example mostly we use for general chemistry classes. Brass is composed of copper and zinc. Copper and zinc. Two different elements, two different pure substances. So when you look at this, you cannot find copper and zinc because you have a uniform appearance. You see only one thing. So we call that homogeneous mixture. So you cannot identify copper and zinc in this mixture. About heterogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture, so you will see like this one. It means I combine different types of pure substances. One, it has this color, another one has another one, and as you see here, you can see all components are visible. All components are visible. What does that mean? It means you can easily see everything in this mixture. We call that heterogeneous mixture. I always ask my students to keep this example for their knowledge to remember homogeneous and heterogeneous. So if you add oil to water, if you add oil to water, always you see oil and water both. It means when we see both oil and oil, let me, sorry, let me write that quite better, handwriting, both oil and water, so more than one, we call that heterogeneous mixture. So please memorize that one. Homogeneous, it means only one is visible. And for heterogeneous, is more than one is visible. More than one would be visible. I'm sure that if I ask you, when we add oil to water, oil layer remains on the top of the mixture, on the top of the mixture, on top of water. Do you remember we talk about the density? What term we should use for this observation? What term we should use for observation of oil remains on the top of water. I'm sure you are going to say that oil layer floats on the water. So if you forgot that, I may ask you to watch the video we talk about the density observation. Thank you for watching this video and hope it could help you to get a better understanding regarding the classification of matters.